Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ episode 102, the knife series where I answer all your questions whether they're sharp or dull. And this week, with Halloween just a few days away, we're going to get a little spooky with our questions. All right, folks, if you are new to this series, this is the part of the video where I talk to you folks and let you know what it's all about. Um, what we do, we go through the comments section below these videos and pick out some cool answer, some cool questions to answer in a future video. So that's how you get a chance to have your question featured. Drop it in the comments below. The first one comes from Eric Extraordinary, who commented on the, uh, the video we recently did on writ dyeing, where we turned this previously white Badlands Vagabond exclusive to this reddish orange color. You can check that out if you want, but Eric Extraordinary, Eric Extraordinary says, Quite the name. DCA, your next challenge is to take a white G10 handle, well, I'm gonna take one of these uh, FRNs, and writ dye it to make it look like a piece of candy corn. Challenge accepted. All right, so I'm not gonna go over the whole uh, writ dyeing process again. Check out the short we mentioned uh, if you're interested in that. But to get multiple colors, apparently you can use hot glue to uh, mask off the portions you don't wanna take dye. Haven't tried this yet, so we're gonna find out together. I've got my scales here, and I think we're gonna have the pivot portion, that'll be our yellow, orange in the center, white at the tip. Uh, so I'm gonna start by uh, masking off the tip section, and then probably, definitely I'm gonna dye the whole rest of the handle yellow first, then mask off the bottom end and then come in with the orange, because the, the orange should go over the yellow quite nicely, and previously it came out kind of red when we did the initial dye job, so the yellow might help it uh, kick back towards orange a little bit. So let's see how this goes, shall we? It's not perfect, but that's gonna be okay for candy corn. There's gonna be a gap anyway. All right, so there's two things I wanna do now, now that our dye bath is boiling, the yellow here. Uh, I put a lot of hot glue on here because I don't want it to kind of melt away too quickly. And I also don't wanna to go too far on the color. So we're just gonna go in for about a five second dip and pull it to see how that goes. Ready, Thomas? As I'll ever be. All right. You're dehydrated. <laughs> I think we can definitely go a little bit more. That's not quite yellow enough. That's getting there. I think one more. Sure. Three, four, five, six. All right, I think we've got a good enough yellow on these. Looks nice and even, so let's glue off the other side. We'll go more or less along the line of the uh, quote unquote bolster there. And we'll see how this goes. Again, I don't know if you, we need to go this thick, but one, I don't want it to melt, and two, looks like the glue at the top did take some of the yellow dye, so I don't want that going through you know, a thin layer if that's all we've got. It's just one of the many things we're not allowed to do inside the office. <laughs> Surprised they let you indoors. That yeah, was a special waiver. Ooh, all right, I'm gonna let that cool a little bit more. <laughs> Using that. <laughs> All right, here goes nothing. Five second intervals again on these. Ready, Thomas? As ever. One, two, three, four, five. Definitely gonna need some more. Need more heat. Oh no, we're losing a little integrity on the hot glue. Oh, we're close though. Three, four, five. I'm gonna call that done. I think we're there. Yeah, man. 
All right, let's rinse it and put it back together. Well, what do you think? I think it came out better than I, I even hoped, man. Look at that. Delicious. Turned out real good. Delicious, I, I wouldn't go that far. I mean, even if it were actually candy corn, it's probably not that delicious. It's our next challenge. <laughs> man, I, I was dubious about the hot glue. I know I, I read it on the internet, which, you know, take the, anything there with a grain of salt, of course. But there it is. The hot glue held up great. I may not have needed to glob as much on as we did, but still. But I gotta say, if you're gonna go for a project like this, make sure you really want the end result because getting the hot glue off was a bear. Oh my gosh, it took longer to get the hot glue off of these scales than it did for the whole rest of the project combined. We would have filmed it, but we don't have that much space for footage. Film is cheap, but not that cheap these days. No. But the color come out, came out great. I was a little worried the yellow might look, the when we poured it into the bottle, looked really brown, but the yellow looked good. And I'm really happy with the orange too. Here it is against the, uh, the other one we did. And next to this, man, this really does look more orange than red. This, uh, the, the original one we dipped for 30 seconds total in the, uh, the apricot whatever, Rit Dye More. Uh, this one right here it was a total of 15 seconds and it had the yellow underneath it to kind of inform the, uh, the color above it too. And that came out great, man. And it flips so great too. Put back together, no problem. Dropped a, a little touch of oil on there, but there you go. A little splotchy on the backside. And that little guy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that little guy. Missed a little spot just, but there, yeah. Just the little tiny imperfections that make it, make you know it was made by hand. There you go. So, Eric extraordinary. Does that meet the, meet your challenge right there? I hope so. Yeah, at least it's not a donut. Next question comes from Nicholas Petrini. Uh, hey DCA, Halloween is just around the corner and fall activities are in full swing. What is a good sub four inch knife that will help me get a good carve into my jack-o'-lantern? I'm looking for something I won't mind getting messy, but will also allow a great deal of maneuverability. All right, having tried to uh, carve pumpkins with you know, plain edged knives over the years, I gotta say I would, I, I don't even wanna get any of my folders or even any of my fixed blades really into a pumpkin carving situation because they're, that's, that's tough, man. The, it's a mess. It's a mess and it's like, it's really slippery, especially like, you know, I, I like a lot of my knives thin and slicey. They kind of like to slide a bit on you when you're, when you're slide or get stuck in a, in a pumpkin when you're trying to carve through it. Um, serrations would work better, sure. Saw blade might not even, might even work even better still, but I honestly don't want to recommend any standard knife for the task. It's just not conducive. Uh, what I would recommend is an actual pumpkin carving set. And the best part is they're not that expensive either, especially this is the set I like to recommend. I've used it before. Uh, we've actually shown me using it on this channel before. It's a Messermeister set, the pumpkin carving set. It's 20 bucks. You get these three tools, which is just what you want. There are some that come with like a whole bunch of pieces, extra, you know, different types of blades, this and that might seem a little bit gimmicky. These are plain and simple, get the job done. And the reason, the primary reason right there is that knife blade. You can see it looks like a tiny, a fine toothed cross cut saw. And it has the power to get through the, the pumpkin rind. It has the teeth there to keep it from slipping around on you. It actually grabs as opposed to sliding out. And it has some flex and a narrow blade. So you've got plenty of maneuverability for little fine detail cuts. Then you've got the scoop to help hollow out the inside. And you've got this little V-shaped scorer if you're gonna be doing designs on the, uh, the surface of the pumpkin too. This is, this is very much a case where for safety's sake, I have to recommend the right tool for the job because I've, some folks out there you may have experienced differently, but I have yet to experience a traditional knife that doesn't make me really scared trying to put it into a pumpkin. So hope that helps. Stick with the right stuff. Uh, it's probably a little late this year for most folks to have been uh, got, get your, you've probably already gotten your pumpkin carving done. But if you haven't, keep something like this in mind for this year or for the next one. 
All right, next question comes from Christopher Finn. I wonder why there's never been a slasher film wherein the slasher is a knife nut and constantly shopping the different knife websites and getting all kinds of different cool knives. It's kind of boring how they usually just have one. Like, it's not for advantage. Explain. You want your protagonist to have a chance of living. Like if Michael My <laughs> Yes, that's true. Like if Michael Myers was constantly showing up in different scenes with different knives from different knife companies, wouldn't that be awesome? I mean, I tell you right now, folks like you and me, maybe not Thomas, but you and me, I see you there. We would have a lot of fun like going, ooh, like I know what that is. But do we really want to be associating our hobby with villainy or villainous intent? Are we the baddies? <laughs> this is what's the, uh, the Reddit, like, am I the a-hole? Um, but no, you know. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, like, be careful what threads you pull on because, you know, our niche is, you know, there, there's sometimes in certain crowds, certain stigma with, with knife use as it is. And last thing I wanna see is uh, that being portrayed negatively on the big screen, quite honestly. Bit of a downer answer, perhaps, but. Uh, we don't wanna be too edgy. Hope that helps. I will say, if I were Mike Myers, I would go for the Victorinox Lobster Splitter. As you can see, it does bushcraft pretty well too. Check out the video. <laughs> All right, now we come to the lightning round for today. We've got a single question in it. John K says, hey DCA, I would love to collect some knives that have a holiday theme. Which knives have a Halloween vibe? Maybe anything with a skeletonized handle? Oh, eh. No? Decent bones. <laughs> yeah. I gotta flesh it out a little bit, is that what you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Savivi Perf, skeletonized handle. No, in all seriousness, there, there's not a ton of like straight up Halloween themed knives. Oh, no, so wrong, wrong, wrong one. Um, but check out, uh, Case has some really cool ones this year. We've got this two blade canoe with a cool Halloween uh, skull and pumpkins graphic and tin to go with it. Check those out, there's, there's not many. We'll leave a, a link to, uh, all the Halloween-y things we've got on the site right now. I like my dad joke, it was a good one. And now we come to our most serious question of the day, which comes from Gary Stearns. Sheath with room for candy bars? And this is the most serious question, so I'm gonna take it most seriously. If you're unsure the size of your candy bar, I would go with the JRE Industries Universal Multi-Tool Sheath. What do these go for? They're like, uh, you know, 30 bucks, and it's got an expandable leather pouch here to fit whatever you wanna stick in there and nothing up top to uh, impede if it's an extra long, uh, like king size bar or something like that. And you can tighten it down there. You got a little Molly compatible slip there and a snap-on belt strap on the back. I think they're called sharing size now. Sharing size? Yeah, they're not big fans of monarchy these days, I guess. <laughs> I was like, do they not believe we can, we can eat the whole thing ourselves? I believe in us, Thomas. Yes. Another option, because I'm taking this most seriously, of course, the Benchmade Adamas. Get one of these, it comes with a sheath. But you know what? The knife's got a daggone pocket clip on it. So take that out, put it in your pocket, throw a candy bar in there. Hmm? Could do. Serious enough for you? Or how about one of my new favorite sheaths as seen on the S35VN Ontario Blackbird? It's got this big old pouch here on the front. There's some full size bars probably wouldn't fit in there, but. Just a handful of fun size. Ooh, you could load it right up. Yeah. Get those like, the, you have the assortments, definitely. That would work pretty well, I think. Then of course there's the, uh, the classic style like survival military sheath as seen on the BK9 from K-Bar and Becker, of course. You got the elasticized pouch there and plenty of length, I would say, on the Velcro loop there to accommodate most sharing size bars, shall we say. And then one more for you. And I had to do this one because the knife that, that uh, fits in this sheath is nice and orange, which is a bit of a theme, as you can see. But the Marbles Camp Bolo, I believe it's called, or the Bolo Camp Cleaver. Sheath sold separately, but there it is. Open that up, take the, uh, the sharpening stone out there. You could fit a couple of Reese cups there, perhaps, or the cup of your choice. And there's a little spot up here for a, little, a couple of minis. 
there you go. Hope that helps. Serious enough for you? It'll do. It'll do. That's all we've got for today. Happy Halloween, everyone who's celebrating. Stay safe, of course. Let me know what you thought of the answers if you have any better ones for me. And make sure to leave your questions below in the comments section as well. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, except of course, you know, the last thing I want to do is make more of these. So we're not, we're not selling these because it took way too long, way too long. But you can get it in white and do it yourself at the link below along with the rest of these knives right here. And while you're over at the site, don't forget about our knife rewards program as well, because if you're buying one of these knives, you might as well be earning some free money to spend on your next ones. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time. What's that behind you? Thank you.